the spirit said, brooding. His word was in my bones. Forget brooding. about acquisition. Acquisition Over is tertiary. The primary the goal brooding. of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be Let your mind be Holy God's fire! For and then do I talk of our own patriarchs in this nation? Men like Apostle Babalola. You read about these people, you will think they were exaggerations. These were careers of potent glory and power. Did not have the best of secular enlightenment and education, but my goodness, these men in their, in their wild quest for God, they stumbled not everything, but what they caught, they really caught. God is a God of patterns. Please write it down if you're writing. God is a God of patterns. God is a God of patterns. What is a pattern? A pattern is a pathway, a methodology, a predefined pathway that leads to a spiritual outcome is called a pattern. And the entire journey of the believer as far as manifesting possibilities is a blend of patterns and the corresponding glories that follow. Listen carefully. So for every dimension of glory that the believer's life should capture and express, there is a spiritual pattern, another word for a mystery, another word for a pathway. There is a spiritual pattern that leads to definite outcomes that we call glory. Are we together now? Every possibility in the kingdom, listen carefully, every possibility in the kingdom is a product of understanding and working in keeping with certain spiritual patterns god does not leave the manifestation of the glory of god to guessing there are exact spiritual patterns that produce exact outcomes now when the believer is laced with all kinds and all levels of ignorance you will find out that number one your life will be bankrupt of glory or number two your life will produce dimensions of glory that are not predictable so you may stumble across certain results perhaps results that come from prophetic decrees so a decree is made over your life and that week becomes a week of favor and then it ceases because the real pattern that controls that outcome has not been grasped this is the product of this is the the the, the call for mastery mastery brings you in a position where you no longer fear your results because you have studied the pattern that leads to that outcome are we together now god is a god of pattern when you go to meet a tailor look up please you meet a tailor one who perhaps is responsible for your your clothes you show that tailor something that you want no matter how complicated the design is sometimes you are even afraid whether the man can do it and he laughs he says i understand he knows how to produce that result why because as complicated as that outcome is there is a pattern if you are not a tailor it will remain a mystery the assignment of the training school is to demystify that mystery are we together now when you go and meet a medical doctor especially a consultant while you are describing your cases using all kinds of uh, you know limited expressions all he's looking for are patterns because there are patterns that can reveal to him that this is this sometimes the patterns may require to take specimens and then to test further but the whole idea is that through the power of patterns many lives have been preserved medically speaking there is a pattern that leads to influence there is a pattern that leads to walking in the supernatural there is a pattern listen carefully that makes you an exceptional leader there is a pattern that leads to wealth and abundance a pattern for speed a pattern for deliverance your assignment as a believer is to remain ever open to bring together by the the ministry of a teaching priest and in partnership with the spirit every service is supposed to be an exposition of spiritual patterns so that if and when you have been around a house of god for a while where the word of god is taught with accurate with accuracy there you may not know everything 
but at least we should see commendable results in your life by engaging patterns are we together now watch this i'm holding a mic here and there is a system to put this mic on when i push this down then it comes back i switched it off now the the mic does not care who manipulates it the moment you engage the pattern that offs the power it offs am i right on that it does not ask you whether you are an american it does not ask you whether you are russian whether you're european whether you are nigerian if the mic is off it is not because of any tribal sentiments so you can hold this mic with such profound potential to amplify your voice and yet you may not be heard and you see it is dangerous to not produce results for a long time i have taught you because your the absence of your result produces another kind of theology when you when someone has to learn god through the lens of your life what part of god will be misrepresented if someone has to use your life as the only template to learn god if your life were the only bible to be read are we going to read John in your life? Are we going to read Proverbs in your life? For some of you, the only part in your life may be Ecclesiastes. You will rob us of knowing that there are other chapters. My assignment is to stretch you and to show you, listen, that you do not have to be afraid of results. Results are exact products of patterns. Are we together? Yes. Moses in Exodus chapter 33, Exodus chapter 33, we'll read verse 13, then we'll go to verse 18. Moses was crying unto God. Verse 18 was a cry to experience the glory of God. But most people do not know that the request started from verse 13. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, it says, show me now thy way that I may know thee, that I may find grace in your sight and consider that this nation is your people. Do you know what he was saying? In other words, I, I need to lead these people properly, but the problem is my convictions and my personal results. And I know that the glory of God upon me would affect their loyalty. So show me your way. Now verse 18, 33 and verse 18. And he said, I beseech thee, show me your glory. You will never experience the glory of God in any aspect of your life until you study carefully the spiritual pattern connected to that. Please, I want you to follow carefully and believe what I'm telling you. Your life will remain an unending wonder once you master the patterns of the spirit. So when the devil wants to rob you of the glory of God, he does not fight the glory. He fights your access to the patterns of the spirit. Are we together? In John chapter 8 and verse 32, Jesus now comes in the New Testament and he's teaching us. And he said, ye shall know the truth. He calls it the truth. He says, and the truth that you know shall make you free. That the truth has liberating power. In other words, if you are bankrupt of the truth, you can remain in bondage. Amplified says that, that you shall be unquestionably free in certain renditions. In John 17, 17, John 17, 17, it says, sanctify them by your truth. Thy word is truth. Go back to KJV. Sanctify them through your truth. It says, thy word is truth. So when the Bible talks of truth, he means access to the word of God. Ignorance is a very dangerous cancer. Worse than the medical diseases that plague people. Ignorance. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. The prophet was speaking by the spirit and lamenting said, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge it says because thou has rejected knowledge i will also reject thee that thou be no priest 
to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. In Psalm 82 from verse 5 to 7, very popular scripture here. They know not, neither will they understand. It says they walk on in darkness and all the foundations of the earth are out of course. Verse 6 says, I have said, ye are gods and all of you, not some of you, not the prophets among you, not the apostles among you. All of you are children of the most high. Verse 7 says, but ye shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes. Ignorance is a dangerous cancer in this kingdom. Hallelujah. In fact, in Luke chapter 11, I believe, um, verse 35, it should be Luke 11, give us 35. Jesus said, take heed therefore that the light which is in thee be not darkness. Do you know what he's saying? That means you can carry a body of information. It may even be spiritual truth and you hope that you are carrying the truth. If it is the truth, it has liberating power. Isn't it interesting that there are many believers who carry a backlog of all kinds of knowledge using all sorts of references. But in the face of real life situation, they are not able to produce victory. If it does not produce victory, it is not the truth. The truth sustains the power to bring victory to the believer. And let God be true. And every man a liar. Are we still together? It says take heed. That what you call light. That means I can carry a revelation and be shouting Rema for years. And yet your life does not capture the corresponding glory. Did you know? I wish I had something, a biro or a stick or something. Give me your drumstick. my. Watch this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a drumstick. Someone can deceive me into believing that this is a mic and I can sincerely believe that this is a mic. Am I right on that? Now, the problem is not my believing. The problem is that I believed a lie. So I can hold that mic confidently in front of you coming from many years of indoctrination. I have been taught that this is a mic. It's just that it was designed in a way that looks like a drumstick. So I can call the whole world and say, come and see how loud this mic can be. The only thing or the only issue here is that my believing was unto a lie. So he's saying, take heed so that what you have been calling Rema, take heed so that what you have been saying, this is revelation. Does it stand the test of time and does it produce the character of glory? Many of us have been holding things that look like what we think they are, but they really are not. You've been holding a revelation that you believe this is the secret of prosperity, but it's not showing in your life. You have been holding a revelation that you believe this is the secret of longevity. This is the secret of excellence. Listen, if it does not produce the glory connected to it, it is not that light. It is not the truth. Are we together now? So back to this example, I'm holding a drumstick and now you imagine that I now add pride to this ignorance. So that when you are lovingly coming to call me to say, listen, you've been holding this for five years, but I want to, with every sense of love, let you know that this is not a mic. This is a drumstick. And I said, no, my mentor told me or a spirit told me that anything that looks like this with a pointed end is a mic. What if he was wrong? Listen, we are not discussing the subject of transformation, but I was teaching our school of ministry students. I think someone asked a question and I was teaching them that when you come to the school of transformation, there are two dimensions to followership that leads to transformation. Just for your knowledge, the first level is called follow them. So, God mandates that you follow human models. Are we together? Models whose lives have captured results enough to inspire you. But the greater dimension is looking unto Jesus. That means you now come to the awareness that even the models as best as they are can be limited. That they are also students in the school of the spirit. They are just students that have had the privilege to go ahead of you. 
So a time will come where both the lecturer and the student stand at a loss. It is only the God of heaven that can show mercy at that point. Are we together now? So that your followership may look like you are following a man, but that beyond that man, you are always verifying that that man is following the Christ. So in, in experience, you are not just looking on to men, you are looking on to Jesus. That's how you get holistically transformed. I can love you with all my heart and not mean to deceive you, but I may have an accumulation of inaccurate or blatantly wrong knowledge and I may communicate that error to you with such passion and I hope not with pride. And you receive it in honor to Jesus and in honor to me as his servant. Except that when you act out that wrong information, the corresponding glory that should follow does not follow. Are we together? Thank you. Now your rod is anointed. <laughs> no, 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 don't. Don't worship it. Hallelujah. You know, believers, this is still part of the things I'm saying now. Somebody can go and hang, put a rope on that thing now. No, it was just an example. If we're together, say amen. amen. So the Bible gives us a word of caution. And this is a message really to us all, but it extends to the body of Christ. It's important that in this season, we are careful and unashamed about examining that which we call light. Is it true light? I love the way the Bible puts it. It says that was the true light that lighted every man meaning there are false lights you don't have to be a wicked person to bring deception you can be sincere but the lights that you carry the bible says the spirit speaketh expressly that some in the latter time shall depart from the faith is that in your bible it says they shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons the person does not have to be demonized the person does not have to be bad but you can teach something that is inconsistent with the character of god it will still bring destruction to God's people are we together my greatest if I have any fear at all in my life it is this that I do not examine my life at a point and find out that what I have been calling truth especially that which I've been proposing to God's people is now discovered that is a lie so I continue to examine myself even whilst I teach are we together now yes but I can tell you by the authority and integrity of scripture, forget about the manifestation of the glory of God in your life if you do not study the patterns of the kingdom. Let's go to the kitchen now. Many of you do well in the kitchen. You know how to cook all kinds of things. Continental dishes, local dishes, some of you. Are we together? Am I right on that? And then some of you are so good that, you know, we call you chefs and all of that. And like I've always told you, when you meet somebody who is professional, all you need to do is describe your end product. Tell them this is the picture of what I, I saw this. Can you produce this? And they smile with the confidence of a good student and say, get out of my kitchen. Give me time. And sometimes what will tempt you back to the kitchen is the aroma that is a testament of mastery. Are we together now? And now you are tempted to come back and say, what in the world is going here? And they tell you your meal is ready. But imagine a very sincere relative, a sincere brother, maybe your husband, who has, who has not got the knowledge of these mysteries and these patterns in the kitchen. Even if he's an anointed person, a, a, a preacher. Now, you lock the person there. Are we together? For instance, me. <laughs> you know what I'm going to do? I will do what I know to do. Pray. I will pray first. Because the Bible says, any man afflicted, that thing there <laughs> is not... That is not a test. That's a trial for me. Are we together? But the point is that there is no glory until there is an understanding of patterns. If you understand this, 
half of your issues are solved because all you need to do is write the various areas in your life where the glory of God has not yet been revealed and then you will take responsibility like a mature believer that you are or becoming are we together you now get back and say there has to be an explanation as to why in spite of the prayers and the prophetic decrees it looks like the curse is still at work in this family is it that God is powerless there has to be an answer do you know there is nothing I know that pleases God like brokenness mixed with a sense of responsibility hallelujah in Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15 Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 15 here's what the Bible says the labor of the foolish the foolish here not being an insult is a description bankruptcy of knowledge the labor of the foolish wearieth every one of them that means there is no sparing provided you are not interested in going for revelation to understand the patterns the ways of God he says it will weary every one of them because he knoweth not how to go into the city not because there is no city because he knoweth not how to go into the city now there are sincere men and women of God who love Jesus with all their hearts but they have not learned the ancient patterns and the mysteries that make ministry work to command results with the dignity of kingdom integrity there are many people whose assignments are influence dependent and yet they do not know the patterns that can make a generation loyal to you it is dangerous to understand your assignment but not know and or have the tools that will help you to be effective are we together yes in this kingdom please write in this kingdom authentic results are built on the revelation of the ways of God in this kingdom authentic results are built on the revelation of the ways of God when you know the ways of God or you may call it the patterns the spiritual patterns that are allocated for the outcome you desire then you are ready to command authentic results that in this kingdom authentic results are built upon the revelation of the ways of God I wrote something down here that I want you to please listen to very carefully action in ignorance is not faith action in ignorance is not faith respectfully speaking there are many teachings on faith that just emphasize action action is the later part of faith the foundation of Bible faith is revelation knowledge if you act in ignorance for instance back to my mic example let's assume that I'm now given the mandates to switch this mic on I can play with it around sincerely so I can knock the mic I can jump around it I'm taking action but it's in ignorance none of those actions will bring it will switch it on so if I before you take action you must verify that you are acting with sufficient knowledge let me give you an example of what many people do in the body of Christ please look up you can choose any issue of concern whatsoever and you can literally act out a variety of action steps that the average believer would take for instance let's use a general example a person or a family that is going through very tough financial seasons you can honestly ask them not for mockery but just to help so what have you done about this situation the first thing they will tell you is I've done everything I know how to do and that's the truth but what did you do they will say I prayed they will say I fasted not wrong but the patterns that produce lasting wealth in the economy of the kingdom is not just dependent on these two are we together now and you tell them what else they say I begged an uncle a wicked man who has all the money to solve this my problem he did not give me what else did you do I said I would try one business or the other and it still did not work now mark this student in light of the knowledge you know now 
this student will barely pass that exam because although there is a lot of dissipation of physical and emotional energy the truth is that he's acting in defiance with the authentic patterns that make the blessing manifest even financially so if you want to help this man the key is not just to give him capital to go and start business you've only recycled another pain are we together now if you really want to help this man you have to go back to isaiah 61 to preach the gospel to the poor it will look like an insult does the poor need help or need preaching so you now begin to give this person a new orientation hallelujah a family that has been bankrupt of victory in terms of you know their spiritual liberty everyone in that family tied down by curses and yokes you ask them what have you done about it sincerely they will most likely answer this way i've gone to every prayer house they will even list it i've met this man of god in fact here is the photo he snapped with me to tell you that i i, I really met him so why has the situation not changed do i know how do you help this man now Every time he or she is studying their Bible, they will find it written here that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And their experience cannot change this reality. No. Let God be true and every man a liar. So for that person, the moment you find out you've done all you know to do and your situation does not change, it's time to start re-examining the patterns upon which your actions are based. Are we together? I hear that there's a, there's a popular saying that doing the exact same thing and, ex, ex, and expecting another kind of result is one definition of insanity. I think I agree. When your actions do not lead to the results, it is not just a faith problem. It is a knowledge problem. You are acting on wrong or inaccurate information. Faith in ignorance is not faith and will not produce results. Please write it down. Faith in ignorance, underline the word ignorance. Faith in ignorance is not faith and will, I mean action, my apologies. Action in ignorance, action in ignorance is not faith and will not produce results. Action in ignorance is not faith and will not produce results. That means the first assignment of any believer seeking to produce results is knowledge, revelation, not action. The first assignment of any believer seeking to produce results is knowledge, revelation knowledge. What kind of knowledge? A thorough understanding, I wrote here, of the patterns allocated for the specific spiritual outcomes. A thorough understanding of the patterns. A thorough understanding of the patterns allocated for specific spiritual outcomes. Once upon a time in my life, I didn't walk in this level of spiritual power. Why? Because the level of spiritual understanding that sponsors this power. I have taught you here. Please look up. When you read the book of Revelations, the Bible says, Worthy is the lamb that was slain and all of that. Uh, or he said, Weep not, for the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed. He is worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll. And then he said, I looked at the throne and I saw a lamb as though had been slain having seven horns and seven eyes notice seven horns and seven eyes the eyes there talks of revelation the horns there talk of authority so for every horn there is an eye connected to it seven horns seven eyes if you have only two eyes two dimensions of revelation you will only have the corresponding authority that matches your level of revelation seven horns seven eyes seven horns seven eyes hallelujah 
Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. The Lord was speaking to Moses, commanding him now. He says, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. He says, and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. In genuine pursuit for spiritual power, I began to explore the materials of people that I thought I saw the workings of the spirit in their lives to a very commendable degree. And I started searching, reading through their books and reading through their stories. All that I was looking for were patterns. Listen, every time you study the lives or the works of great people, don't just be carried away by the parables and the stories and the similitudes. Make sure you are sensitive enough to deduce patterns. The power is not in the story. The power is not in the parable. That's why Jesus would give parables, but hidden within those parables were patterns. Those who heard it just went back nodding their heads. They had been enlightened in terms of, you know, from a, a, a literary standpoint. But the disciples will come and say, what is the hidden meaning of this? And Jesus will begin to explain. The sower is this, the seed is the word of God, and so on and so forth. You have not really benefited from any material until you deduce from that material the pattern connected to the glory. Let me repeat myself again. That you have not been blessed by any material until you can deduce from that life or that material, the pattern that reveals that glory. I remember years ago watching Benny Hinn minister and such display of the glory of God upon his life. Miracles, signs and wonders. I would watch Reinhard Bonnke of blessed memory. I would watch um, Billy Graham minister in his crusades and he would just come up the stage just casually and for the next one hour you were spellbound by the level of intellectual acumen, the intelligence, the, his presentation of the gospel was so compelling. You would watch the people and, and those days, at, at, at least as far as I watched, you didn't have instruments playing like, you know, the Pentecostal charismatic circles would do. There would be pin drop silence and while he's talking, you would almost think the people were ignoring him until he made the altar call you would see people get up just walk like something was pushing them i said what kind of grace is this he did not seem to perform many miracles as i know and as i saw but my goodness the compelling power of the gospel and i said i desire this grace show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Will you show us the ancient path? Lead us along eternal highway. We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. I saw great fathers like Kenneth Copeland or our Roberts. They spoke about the healing power of God and they spoke about his ability to prosper a man, to match the wealth of nations. It looked like they were joking except that their lives proved it. You study the story of Aura Roberts, now the university stands as a monument, an eternal signature that a man of faith walked upon the earth. You would watch his crusades where he would lay hands upon thousands of people and you would record miracles as though they were stage managing it. I said, no, this glory must have a pattern behind it. Don't just admire the possibilities that come from the life of a believer. You must reach back and find out what spiritual pattern has been found. I watch men like R.W. Shambach these were men who walked mysteriously in dimensions of power. You study their videos and their materials, you would see the manifestation of the Holy Spirit. In his popular words, he would shout and say, don't touch that dial. And the miracles, the manifestations, you would hear of fingers that were amputated, growing back. Do I talk of Charles and Francis Hunter? men who trivialized the healing they they brought mastery to the healing ministry they brought they brought a scientific component to healing they would teach a particular dimension of healing and line up the people who had that case 
literally pulling people out of wheelchairs like child's play. The things that are written aforetime, the Bible says they are written for our learning. I watched Benny Hinn pile up stadiums, pile up auditoriums in the name of the Lord. If you heard that Benny Hinn was coming to your area or Reinhard Bonke, I had the privilege to be in at least one or two of his meetings. And his last and final and arguably about his largest meeting that happened in Lagos. I mean, you, I watched Benny Hinn. My dad those days used to get, you know, the, 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 the cassettes of his crusades. It was from him that I saw that evangelism by fire. That fire would come upon something and consume it physically without you setting it up. These were not things I was told. I had the privilege to be in at least one of his major crusades. I saw a display of the power of God from that man almost like he was doing nothing. And yet I watched, respectfully speaking, other people and you would see the energy being dissipated, begging God to move. The moment the axe head is blunt, be ready to dissipate energy without results. Hallelujah. And then do I talk of our own patriarchs in this nation? Men like Apostle Babalola. You read about these people, you will think they were exaggerations. These were careers of potent glory and power. Did not have the best of secular enlightenment and education. But my goodness, these men in their, in their wild quest for God, they stumbled not everything, but what they caught, they really caught. Hallelujah. I study a lot on the history of the church of, of God in Nigeria, you know, generally. And I mean, some of these men, some of the prophets past that have joined the cloud of witnesses, you step within their vicinity and they x-ray you. Men who laid hold on eternal life, dimensions of the spirit. Hallelujah. You would go to their crusade grounds and you would marvel at the manifestation of the hand of God. That if they told you that these men were once alive, you would think they were parables. Forget about acquisition. Acquisition is tertiary. The primary goal of lifting. Use it quickly. Oh, fire! Be concentrated. Let your mind be Holy God's fire!